bathroom. Good luck to a night. Dilly dilly. We don't pronounce the R, we don't pronounce the L, both should be silent. So if you'd like to phonetically spell Charleston, C H A A A S T O N. S. I'm an eighth generation South Carolinian, which around here makes me moan like a cousin. Which is funny, but not really a joke. Welcome to the South. Which is why I married a girl from Wisconsin. I married outside the local gene pool, just to be sure. So it was a boring idea. So you went to school here, did you say? Yeah. University of South Carolina. Well, that's not here. That's, that's not here. That yeah, that's in Columbia. You know what we call Columbia in Charleston? What? Hell with a screen door. No. <laughs> what year did you graduate? 2002. 82. Okay. Oh, you're a Gamecock? I am. That's oh, the garnet. That. That's why he wears garnet. There you go. <laughs> so, this is a fun tour. Um, I've been a tour guide. You better make us laugh. I've been a tour guide since 2000. Uh, I drive carriages in the daytime. I give daytime walking tours. I started doing ghost tours in the evening. I met my wife. She's a tour guide. On a guide tour? Also. She's a tour guide too. She worked for another company. I met her. Good ask questions. And we worked for a company for a couple of years. We decided to branch out on our own and do our own tours. I was tired of giving ghost tours. So I wanted to find a subject matter of tour that would work at nighttime. This is my baby, Wicked Charleston, the adult history. Um, I learned all this stuff when I was a kid growing up from my Irish grandfather. My Irish grandfather was born in 1900, which means he was 20 years old when American Prohibition started. Can you think of a more perfect age to be than 20 years old when Prohibition started? And being Irish and living in a seaport town. So as I got older, my granddad used to tell the stories about downtown Charleston. The older I got, the cooler the stories became because I started figuring out what they meant. My granddad used to talk about Market Street. He always said, I remember Market Street, $20 used to get you a beer tattoo and a social disease. <laughs> when you turned like 13 years ago, like, about 13 years ago, like, okay, granddad, you're much cooler than I thought you were, you know? So Market Street has completely changed in my lifetime, which is why I usually start the tour here. Today is little shops and boutiques and restaurants. It's very nice and very touristy. When I was a teenager back in the 70s, topless bars, strip clubs, <laughs> dark <Really>? dealers, <laughs> a little more fun, a little more rough around the edges. What happened? Two things in conjunction, two years apart. Hurricane Hugo in 89, water was up into the roof of this building. Wow. That's how deep the water was, wow. storm surge. And then they closed down the Navy base. We went from 130,000 Navy guys to 3,000 Navy guys. When you lose 130,000 Navy guys, all the strip clubs and topless bars go out of business. <laughs> Just the way it works, right? So those two things in conjunction changed Market Street forever. Cleaned it up. And as history goes on by, people forget stuff. It's not written down, right? So locals, people that have moved here in the last 25 years, have no idea what this was like when I was a teenager. It was rough around the edges. So that's why I started doing this tour. I've written a couple books, Wicked Charleston Volume 1, Wicked Charleston Volume 2, collect all these fun little stories. And that's, I can tell you some of my favorite fun stories of Charleston. Prostitution history, murder history, JFK sex scandal story in Charleston, if you don't know that. He was having an affair while he was living in Charleston. Imagine having an affair while he was living in Charleston. Okay. I know that's shocking. When she was a blonde. Uh, okay. We'll get to that story later. So, all right. So when I was a teenager, I used to come hang out here. My brother went to the College of Charleston. I wanted to hang out on Market Street because I heard about the fun, debauchery nature of the neighborhood. I didn't have a car, couldn't get down here, so I begged and pleaded for my brother to let me hang out with him one Friday night. 
So he met us right here in the corner by the planter's end. Me and my best friend Pat Hudson were with him. Uh, my brother told us, I'm taking you guys to Big John's Dive. We were all excited. Big John's was called the best dive since 55. <laughs> Naked girls dancing, dancing on the bar. And we were like, okay, let's go to Big John's. I can't wait, you know? <laughs> so we started walking through the market. My brother told us, we could walk through the market and there's going to be women stepping out of these doorways. Before you say anything to any woman, you need to double check and make damn sure they don't have Adam's apples. They don't have what? Adam's apples. Okay. I was 15 that? years old. I had never seen a transvestite hey, in my lifetime. Hey. Yeah. That changed that night. We started walking down Market Street. We walked past number 96 Market Street, which was cleverly called the 96 Club. My friend Pat walked by the front door. He walked back and put his face up against the plate glass window. And he looked at me with this shocked expression on his face. And I was going, what? He goes, there's some women in there, but I'm pretty sure they're men. <laughs> it was a gay transvestite cross-dressing bar in 1975 in downtown Charleston. <laughs> I was an innocent little 15-year-old Southern boy. And I was like, oh my God, you know. It was a little out of bounds of normal behavior for us. But that's all. It's changed completely. There you go. So, what we're going to do is to walk around the city and tell you kind of stories from Charleston history all the way up to now. This city is a high society, a rich city, but it's got a nice underbelly with a lot of fun stories. So it's a seaport town, guys. Come on. We know when sailors come to town, they aren't looking for churches, right? Sailors come to town to eat, drink, and be merry. Or you drink and be with merry. So here we go, the first stop, stop, two and a half blocks. Next stop is an Irish drinking hall. There's no stories in an Irish drinking hall, is there? Yeah. He talked to Grace Pizzotto, P-I-E-X-O-T-T-O. -T -T -O. She was an Italian Jew, which is kind of weird by itself, you know? She ran the nicest gentleman's club in the city. She made a deal with the mayor. She and her girls were willing to entertain the Democratic so the city paid for it. So she told the lady, I know we have to pay for your protection, and that's all right. I know you are raided and close us down to make a show for the public periodically, and that's all right. I object as you're writing the charge to me against maintaining a disorderly house, for as you well know, I only employ the most quiet, respectable, and ladylike whores south of the Mason-Dixon line. Yours truly, Grace Pizzotta. <laughs> Come on, you gotta love. That is a great Can market. Can you say that last line again? Okay, I'm getting wondering. there. I am. I'm Can getting you repeat there. that? that I'm, getting, I'm gonna repeat it. Okay. I'm well, getting there. A neon sign. Quiet, respectable, ladylike horse south of the Mason Dixon line. I would go see what they look like, wouldn't you guys? I always have this scenario in my head that these gentlemen were having lunches together and they would read this. I could hear when I'm going, like, Hey, Joe, you ever seen a quiet, respectable, ladylike whore? No. It says they got some here at 11 Fulton Street. Let's go check them out and see what they look like. After this was published in the newspaper, she never got shut down again. Business boom. Those people went to check out and see what a quite respectful little like whore looks like. And they were pleased with the surface. And she died in 1889 when they probated her will. She left over $140,000 of charitable donations. 
Next page. Miss Irene Werner, number five Clifford Street, which is just around we were standing, has associated herself with the following bright, entertaining, and energetic ladies. I like the energetic parts. She lists her girls by name. Now I'm gonna read the names for you. Just so you see what a name. This is a 1902. So these will sound very old fashioned to us. What a 1902. Pretty common name. And I bet these girls aren't using their real names in this business, hey? Huh? Miss Gladys Gray, Miss Ethel McDonald, and Miss Bertha Lippincott. Go Bertha, huh? There is a limerick attached to this. Hey, buddy, what's up? Ben and Jerry's used to be called an old whorehouse back in the day. Do, 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 do. Hey, yeah. Hey. Anthony, are you going to eyelashes? Nah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Driving down to the South Carolina. It's wedding 2018, Brent and Lauren. Entering the reception hall. So, this is Brittany, this is Bridal Party. This is you, Look at it. Oh, God damn pigs, look at it. Goddamn pigs. 